My name is Emily Rollheiser and I'm a grade 7 student at Sir George Simpson Junior High School. Aujourd'hui, on a le plaisir d'accueillir Sir Alice Trottier. Today, we are pleased to welcome Sir Alice Trottier. Merci. Tu es né en 1922. Pouvez-tu parler à propos de ta famille? Oui, je suis née en 1922 à Morinville et j'ai passé toute ma vie, ma jeune vie, ma jeunesse à Morinville jusqu'à l'âge de 18 ans. Ma famille demeurait tout près du couvent où les sœurs enseignaient et où j'allais à l'école. Mais je restais chez moi, je n'étais pas pensionnaire. Mais il y avait beaucoup, euh, plusieurs pensionnaires, garçons et filles, à ce couvent-là. Ma famille euh, comprenait sept enfants. Je suis l'aîné de la famille. Et puis, je suis entrée au noviciat, comme on appelait, à Training School, à Trois-Rivières, au Québec. Pendant deux ans, j'ai appris comment être religieuse. Et puis, je suis revenue dans l'Ouest pour enseigner. Et j'ai enseigné toute ma vie. J'ai enseigné près de 40 ans. Et j'ai fini mon enseignement à Newman College, où j'enseignais aux séminaristes et aux autres élèves. At six years old, you joined a school and boarding school in Morinville. That was under the direction of La Fille de Jésus. Yes. How was your time there? And how long were you there? I started in grade one and went up to grade 12 at that boarding school, or convent as we called it. It was a school also for the outside, outsiders as well as boarders, you know. And so I, I loved it very, very much. I even got my great love of history through a, one of the teachers. It was a lesson on Alfred the Great. I was in grade six. I never forgot it. So this, this from the, then on, I had a great love of history. So I really received a lot from the sisters there at the Notre Dame convent, as we called it then. Then you joined the religious order, Les Filles de Jésus. Can you tell us about that? I joined the sisters in 1940, as I said. I went to Trois-Rivières, Three Rivers, which is in Quebec. And I stayed there two years to learn how to, to be a sister, I guess. And I came back, I pronounced or said my promises or vows as they called it then. And then I came back to the West to make my, uh, to go to the uh, normal school, which lasted only a few months then. And then I started to teach also. St. Albert's rooted in the work of several religious orders, such as the Oblate Fathers, the Great Nuns, the Fille de Jésus, and several others. Can you talk to us about their work in the community? I would like to talk, first of all, of the Grey Nuns, because the Grey Nuns were here in St. Albert in 1861, I think, because they had been at Lac St. Anne before. And so, uh, Bishop Legal wanted, Bishop Grandin, first of all, wanted them in St. Albert. And they established the first hospital. They, they had um, an orphanage for uh, orphans from Lac St. Anne. They, they had all kinds of charitable works, which they still continue today with their Grey Nuns Hospital, the Uville Home, and I could name quite a few. So they, they have been outstanding pioneers of St. Albert. And we have to mention the Grey Nuns. And of course, the Oblates with Bishop Grandet, Bishop Legal afterwards, and so on. Bishop Legal moved to St. Albert to become the Archbishop of Edmonton in 1918, but he had been named in 1912, when the whole Northwest under the Hudson's Bay Company was really the diocese of Bishop Grandet. It was so vast. So in 1912, Rome decided to divide it into two parts, and the one, one became the, the Archbishop, the, uh, the Archdiocese of Edmonton, and the Diocese of Calgary. 
As a teacher and a principal, did you ever teach any Aboriginal or Métis students? Not in Morinville, because I have been principal there. But when I was in Pinter Creek, I remember I had two students. We had students from the reserve, which uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a few miles uh, away from Pincher Creek. And I had two big guys in grade, grade 11 or 12. And they, I, I was teaching typewriting. And you can imagine those two guys, they were not very preoccupied in knowing how to typewrite very well. So I always scolded them because they looked at their fingers. They weren't supposed to look. So I remember it. one was Jim and the other one, I can't remember the name, but I found out afterwards that he had committed suicide. But they were great guys. They were very good uh, pupils. And so we had so many of them also in the other grades. St. Albert is celebrating its 150th anniversary. It was originally founded by Father Lacombe and Métis families. Is there anything you'd like to add? St. Albert was founded also by, by French Canadian families because it was uh, around 1891 or that the, uh, the pioneers came from Quebec to establish themselves to take homesteads in Morinville, especially around the St. Albert. And so they, they, they were very, uh, in St. Albert, the French Canadian families had been established there. Uh, here, as well as the Métis family. And we have to think of all those pioneers because 150 is a, a big, is a, a very important anniversary. But we have to think of the pioneers, the history behind all that anniversary or celebration. We owe them a very, very, very much. And of course, we have to thank God for all the blessings that came on the population of St. Albert. Sir Trottier, c'était un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Thank you very much for coming. We had a pleasure meeting you. Ça m'a fait plaisir. Merci beaucoup. Je suis très honoré d'avoir été invité. I feel honored that I've been invited here to St. Albert, especially on this occasion of, of the 150th anniversary, especially as a historian. I just love it. <laughs>